Well, I have a poem in um, what I guess you would loosely call ballad stanzas. It's, uh, this poem is full of cliches and uh, really easy rhymes. So you'll have to bear with me on this one. It's called Sky, S-K-Y-E. You were celibate in college, but didn't want to be. Dejected and rejected, you were a sight to see. One day you met a girl named Sky while walking by the sea. She's too cool, you told yourself. No way will she like me. The two of you hung out a lot, went on many an adventure. One day she asked if you'd rub her back. You tried to conceal your pleasure. But three years of rejection had riddled you with doubt. You'd given girls back rubs before and they'd just thrown you out. Sky took you to her dorm room and lit an incense stick. She took her shirt and jeans off. You thought about your dick. She lay face down on her bedspread in her cotton underwear. You sat beside her on the bed. She pushed away her hair. You let your nervous hands slide down from her shoulders to her waist. Here, let me take my bra off, she said, and your heart raced. There are many horrors in the world, like terrorists and bombs, and many profound poems, like the Iliad and Psalms. With all the weighty topics from which one can select, topics that are serious and politically correct, why do you write so broadly and why do you descend into the pit of prurience? Why and to what end? But I digress. <laughs> you were so excited you thought that you would pop. At the same time, you were worried that Sky might say, please stop. You rubbed her back and shoulders while she lay there on her chest, then let your hands drift down a little closer to her breasts. She didn't say, please stop it, didn't push her hands away. She just giggled and rolled over so her breasts were on display. Yes, the world is filled with horror hate and holocaust. The coral reefs are dying and the people, they are lost. So why focus on the peril, the crude and impolite? Aren't other subjects more important? Could your critics be right? Then Sky took your head in her hands and drew you toward her face. She kissed your mouth with lips and tongues, the tongue the two of you embraced. Then f thus finally it happened, you thanked the stars above. No more nights of longing. You were certain this was love. <laughs> this is called Date. One night in late May when it was warm, you went to Bambi Larkin's house for the first and only time. She was sexy in a 40-ish, older woman sort of way, always smelled like perfume, always wore dresses that were just a little too short, and you wanted her, this divorcee, this mom. So you were rather surprised when you discovered that her house was a mess, and not just sort of. The smell of cat urine hung in the motionless air, making you wonder if she ever opened a window. Only a sofa was clearly visible. The rest of the furniture and whatever else she owned was gathered under tarps. Cats roamed the house in search of food. Dogs barked and yelped from behind closed doors. She wanted you to stay the night. But one of the dogs was in her bedroom and she didn't feel she could let him out because he was mean. So she took you to what was sometimes her son's room, but when she opened up his fold-out couch, you both discovered that his stained mattress was covered with breadcrumbs. At least you hoped that's what they were. She brushed them onto the floor and went to the closet, 
brought out a brand new sheet still in its plastic wrapper, bit the package open, and you made frantic love on that itchy, scratchy sheet. After your words, you went naked into her bathroom, felt cat litter on the tile underfoot. The, bath, the bathroom reeked of pine saw like she tried to swab it down just before your visit. You're no genius, but you knew you had to get the hell out of there. So you said you had to be at work super, super early the next morning, and then you escaped into the soft suburban night. Now, 15 years later, you wonder what's become of Bambi Larkin and why you never talked to her again. And 